Good morning, traders from around the world. How's everyone doing this fine Friday morning? How is everyone? Dan Walsh, what's up? Good, my, good man. I was about to say good man, my friend. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, Mr. Walsh. Fred's in the house. What's up, Fred? Pleasure to have you here. Jim, Rob LeClaire is here to make some money. I like it. Rob Y, Terrence, Tina, Zane. How's everyone doing? Zane, big shout out, man. Glad to have you here this morning. It's going to be a good day today. Why is it going to be a good day? Because we're going to trade the markets. And that's what we love. That's why we're here. We're going to go check out some gaps. Uh, I already got a good list prepared. I guess my great big question um, is going to be what stocks do you want to look at? Any gaps, anything that's on your mind? Dan Walsh says, a good time to sit Brady. I, I don't know why I did that, Dan. <laughs> well, I do know why. Let me give you at least my thoughts before we go look at gaps. <laughs> I thought the Pittsburgh Steelers would put up more of a defense in the first game. And uh, Cam Newton is going against the worst defense in the NFL. So I was hoping that, all right, you know, Brady gets 17 and Cam gets 22. That was my thoughts. You know, oh, well, we'll see. All right, well, uh, I got three gaps um, that I have pulled up here, and I'll go through and break everything down with you guys as well this morning. Just letting you know, this particular session um, is going to start in 28 minutes. The market is open in 28 minutes. So here's the gap up, gap down list pre-market that I was looking at, along with a few others. So these are the gap down lists right here, and uh, I've gone through some of them. We can go through a little bit more, if you will. Uh, again, some of you guys are throwing up some some out there. So we're going to go through some of these that you guys are throwing out and talk about them. So Brad says the Marvel gap is too big. So Marvel Technology, sticker symbol MRVL. Let's go pull that up. MRVL, let's go take a look at it. So this is the daily chart. And uh, pre-market is about $8.39, uh, which is about 20% down, which in my opinion is going to be a little too big. Uh, it's down here at 835 I mean, that's really, really, really far. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, what's today's date? Mm, I know what today's date is. All right, 9-11-15. Um, and I think during the market, just throwing out there, we'll probably have, I'll have a moment of silence during the market open, maybe a few minutes before, a few minutes after. I haven't figured out the exact time, but I will read my Facebook post later today. Uh, but just gonna be a great day to reflect, be, happy, be hopeful for the future and reminisce on the past. I think today is always a good day to do that. So 9-11-2015, uh, let's look at MRVL is a nice gap down, but it is quite far. So the better gap open would have been right about here. That would have been preferably the best gap that Marvel could do uh, on this particular time frame. Gapping down 21%, I mean, it could still move, um, if we're going to trade this today, it will be bearish on a pullback retest, and we're going to wait on it. So we're not going to look at Marvel for like an hour or something, maybe even longer. I'm going to put on my little list over here that I have on my little uh, worksheets. Where is it? All right, so Marvel, M-R-V-L. So we'll keep an eye on it just in case, but honestly, I mean, there's not going to be too much uh, to talk about on Marvel. 20% probably might even be hard to short anyway. So something to keep an eye on. Uh, Fred says, Netflix looks good. Netflix? <laughs> uh, is it really MFLX? Um, I guess you're right. I was like, Netflix? I've never heard of that one. I thought it was a typo, but apparently... I'm learning a new ticker today, Fred. Thanks for teaching me something new, man, as always. I appreciate it. Ticker symbol MFLX, multi, what is that? Multi Fine Line Electronics. It's kind of a cool name. It's a semiconductor company. Um, let's see. Pre market, we don't have anything right now. Volume is a little light. If we're coming over here, where did MFLX pull up? I don't see it on this chart. Do you have it anywhere, Fred? It might, you might be referring to Netflix, but let me actually just look at up properties. Let me go to time scale, extended hours. Let me hop in here to the hourly chart and see if it has any kind of pre-market data. No, I don't really have any pre-market data on it, buddy. 
I don't see that it's gapping. Now that I could be, it could be mistaken. So this data is obviously not going to be perfect. Um, I'll uh, let you look in some research and kind of check that one out. Netflix isn't uh, really doing that much. Uh, talking about Netflixes, so I got a bear call spread on Netflix, which simply means um, I sold the 104 call and I bought the 105 call, and that's expiring today. So as long as Netflix stays above 103.78, I really won't have any worries about it at all. It's down very, very small. I'm kind of thinking today's gonna to be a little bit of a bearish day, but I'm gonna be very, very patient because the market is moving softly today. It's not really moving that much, but it is moving down just a little bit. So we might have a good afternoon sell-off is what I'm gonna anticipate. So I'm gonna be pretty patient in the morning, uh, as patient as we need to be. We, we might play some games, we might play some trivia. Our goal today, um, here's my plan is I'm either going to, you know, max loss is going to be 3R. So I'm either going to lose 3R today or I'm going to make 6R today. That's going to be kind of my goal. That's my thought process. I'm either going to lose 3 or make 6, which is a 9-point swing, <laughs> which is pretty big. So again, that's your risk. That's my maximum risk for the day is 3R. I don't think we're going to lose that. I haven't really lost 3R um, in a while since like two weeks ago <laughs> in one day. That was a Monday. Uh, today's a Friday, so we're going to see. We'll figure out what happens on Netflix. But bottom line, we got four points to the upside before I even have to worry about the spread uh, that I got going on. Here's the hourly charts, and I'll turn pre-market off. We're not really moving much right now on Netflix pre-market. I mean, it really is opening pretty much right about here. So again, we do have a little bit of a pennant triangle pattern on Netflix. This is the hourly chart on Netflix. And if it pops bullish, I agree that it could move a little bit. If we start rolling over bearish, I actually think we're gonna roll down bearish. So we might give this an hour or two on Netflix. I might look at it again a little bit later. I was just about to see if Joe is here because Joe is like a like a savant when she trades Netflix, but I don't know exactly what's gonna do. So I think if it rolls over, I'm, I'm semi-anticipating on the daily chart that this looks kind of like a flag pattern, something like that. It might last another day. It definitely doesn't have to break today by any means, but my anticipation is that Netflix is a little bearish. Here's your exponential moving averages and my little stop slash triggers above the 10 EMA, which we actually, uh, we haven't hit on this most recent downslide for the last week or so. William Robertson says, good morning. Good morning, William. Ready to make some, uh, some money, some money, some moolah. So there's Netflix, um, Google not doing anything really spectacular today. So it's just kind of hanging out. Again, very, very small gap down. FNSR, what is this? Um, fi Finasar. Dan says it's not great. I agree. <laughs> uh, it's gapping down there, 1265. So it, it is a good gap down. I like the white candle. I like this white candle. Again, perfect pivot clearing would have been about 14 and some change. Volume is pretty good. Uh, we do have a daily support at right around here. I'm going to put this one in the category of Marvel. Almost the same category. FNSR is a nice gap down, but it's quite far. If we're going to trade it, uh, same exact thing. It is a good gap. It's a little far. It is on earnings. It might be kind of hard to short, but I do think that I can put that on the watch list and just come back to it. I want to give it time. It's a little extended. And again, if I'm going to play it, I'm going to play it on a retest or a pullback today on FNSR. Brad says uh, Kroger and NEE might be good. All right, let me go look at Kroger. Kroger up uh, a little bit, actually. $38. Wow. All right. So um, I actually had some analysis on here. We didn't make this an official trade on Kroger. I'm trying to remember what it was. Ah, yes. Okay, it was this morning star reversal pattern. I'm sorry, evening star reversal pattern. Um, okay, this is earnings. Oh, that makes sense. That's why I didn't make an official trade. I was like, I wonder why, because it, it looks good. Anyway, here's your evening star reversal pattern. Um, Kroger is a bullish retest gap. So we have a white candle with good volume and we're gapping up today. So I'm not going to personally trade uh, Kroger or make it official because it's a bullish retest gap and I, I'm slowly weaning or leaning more towards just not trading those because they're just not, uh, since February, accumulatively, not really profitable at all. Um, so Kroger, bullish retest gap, gapping to a resistance level. 
it is trapping people. So that's the one thing that I do like about the gap is this is a pivot. And again, I had a stop in there and I had some analysis that was bearish. So if I did it, I'm assuming someone else would have done it as well. So it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, I think my dear friend Marsha might have some shares of Kroger. So she might be happy about that. It is above the 100 simple moving average. Uh, and again, it's gapping to a little bit of a resistance. So I would uh, kind of be interested to see if this could run up. So again, it's gapping to about 38.21, which is right about here. I think this could run up a little bit and then fade. That's probably how I think we could kind of play that. Um, I don't know, Dan. You might have to ask Brad. He's here today. He'll let you know. Uh, might look to fade it if it rolls over nicely from the resistance. We'll see. There's, I think there's a one or two other better gaps out there that I'll pull up in just a little bit, but I'm gonna put that on my list over here. Keep an eye on it, we'll see. So we'll have some, we'll have some cannon fodder. We'll have things to look at. What was the other one? NEE, -E, ticker symbol NEE, -E, Nextera Energy Company, 9390. Down 1.5% and this is, again, this is a little bit better. This is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. So let's analyze this gap really quick. This is the daily chart that we're looking at on ticker symbol NEE. And 97.23, I have drawn as a support level. So I'm just kind of zoom out here just so we can see why I have that level drawn. Again, you know, your lines are important to you because those are what you saw. So keep always keep in mind your perspectives when you draw in. And the next line I have is this resistance support at about 89.51. So that could be a target for us on Nextera Energy. We do have a nice white candle. We have a good white candle that formed yesterday and the stock is gapping down. We had a nice little bullish gap up between 9.4 and 9.8. So that probably had some bullish momentum and some people are thinking, okay, this is a bullish retest. We trade up, we pull back, we should bounce. So the fact that it's opening around 93.90 is right about here. The low of this candle is 94.04. So we're just barely clearing this pivot. Let me come in here to the hourly chart. This is already kind of my favorite gap of the day, actually. Um, hourly chart, nice white candle, lower shadow, and some good volume. So this is gonna be all about the open for me. And uh, this is what I'm actually gonna keep a close eye on. It is a gap and go. Um, let me go look at the 15 minute chart, 15 minute chart, we got a white candle with good volume. And the five minute chart, we got a white candle, good volume. So for all intents and purposes, uh, this is a perfect gap and go. So this is one I think that we should really, really keep a close eye on. NEE, perfect gap and go on all time frames, gaps, levels, everything. One to watch early in the morning. Okay, so I'm not quite done yet with this analysis. So, I mean, as far as the gap, it's, it's on my list, it's my favorite of the day. Let me go check out some pre-market data and I'm kind of interested in just like the pre-market high, pre-market low. If I'm trading something really, really aggressively like that, I just wanna know how it's moving in the after hours so I can see what kind of support resistance levels are there. And uh, this could be a really fun gap to try. This is, I'm already ready to risk an R on it. <laughs> so that's, uh, and that's all you're risking, right? It's just one hour of risk. Go into any trade with your risk potential and know it, keep it in mind. All right, so pre-market, this is the yellow dotted lines, or whatever, those are the pre-market levels. Um, so we have a hammer candle, we broke the hammer. So that little, you see this little hammer candle, this is a 15 minute pre-market, we had a big hammer candle. We have, the, the volume is a little light, as you can see. We really don't have that much pre-market uh, volume, but there has been some over here. So pre-market volume is not that amazing, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna say that there's some pre-market resistance. All right, I already have a note on here. Give me one second, where's my little note? I had a note, where did it go? That's the one thing that TradingView is gonna work on, I think, is the, the note ability. So I had the note right there and it just doesn't show up on other time frames. So let me just kind of bring this over. Give me one second. All right, let me see if this works. Pull into the, I'll pull into the hourly. Here's the hourly pre-market. 
And pre-market is just, um, again, it's just something to keep in mind. You can just see some levels, right? Some volume, highs and lows. See how fast you might need to take it out the gate, whatever. Uh, so we, de we definitely have a pre-market low, which is a pretty good wick. And again, even though it's not occurring on great volume, it's going to be very, very good to know about. Trust me. We might even short that retest. Um, pre-market low, 9304. Pre-market low, 9304. If we get the chance to play that at that price as a retest, we could. Good resistance around 94.30 pre-market. As long as any E opens below, I mean, really this low, I would say 94, and doesn't trade above 94.30, I love it. I'm going to watch that early in the morning. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see what that one does. We'll watch that in the in the early morning and just kind of see how it moves. Okay, so it's 8.17 my time, 9.17 Eastern. So in three minutes, we're going to look at SPY and Apple, just kind of as we do every day. Um, before we do that, I'm just going to sneak peek over here at Alibaba. Alibaba is probably my second favorite gap of the day. And the only reason is, is simply because I talked about it yesterday. <laughs> so anything, if you're ever excited about a trade, you know, 12 hours in advance, you know it's gonna be one to watch. Just don't be emotional about it. Just come up with a plan and follow it. As I was mentioning yesterday, we have what could be a flag pattern, pennant pattern. We're already in a swing trade in it. And the low of yesterday was 63.34. So we're gonna to wanna to open um, above, below that price. So I will say if Baba, opens below the low of yesterday, bearish sentiment. Sentiment. And again, the reason I'm thinking that's bearish is you got a white candle, the trend's already bearish and we're gapping down and we're taking out some lows. Um, Bob opens below the low yesterday, bearish sentiment. 63.13 is going to be a little bit of a support, pre-market low. So I would say wait for the break and retest of pre-market low price area. It's going to be my plan on Baba. It's staying on the list. I, I would have a bearish sentiment on this one today. We already, we're already in a bearish uh, swing trade. Volume was really, really big the other day. We got some cute little candles that came in and we could have a nice day today on Baba. Um, it's one of those stocks that, again, very rarely does this happen, but yesterday I was like, well, I don't think this is gonna happen, but if it does, blank, blankety blank, 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 blank. And then it did exactly that, which is, I was like, all right, we got some white candles, you know, a little bit of a pennant pattern. If we start gapping down tomorrow, we start clearing some lows, I'm a little bearish on it. So, there we go. All right, it is pretty much 8.20 slash 9.20 Eastern. Let's go check out SPY, which isn't gapping um, that much. SPY is the ETF that tracks the Standard & Poor's S&P 500. We are down a smidge, which I'm still slightly bearish on. Uh, the low of yesterday was 194.25. So I, I'm gonna say this is just kind of my plan in the market today. Um, Newsom is calling for a slower morning and then a late afternoon rollover. Semi bearish day. Um, could be bullish though, but still some selling in the day. That's just my, that's, that's really, oops, just a guess. I mean, I don't have anything to back that up other than just my hunch. I don't know what hunches mean at this point. Uh, all we can do is just, you know, we, we write our plan down and we follow it, right? I mean, I have, I have no idea what's gonna go on from there. So there is, um, 
There is a SPY. It's kind of my plan. Again, I got triggered and bearish at 199.31 uh, when it gapped up to the resistance and to the 20 EMA. So the more it rolls down, the happier I'll be. Let me hop over here to Apple. And Apple, we're not really gonna talk about much today. I mean, again, it could move. We're already triggered into a bearish swing trade. And bottom line is the lower it goes, the better that swing trade will look. Uh, it's still in a pennant pattern. I don't know what the market does today, but I can say semi-assuredly, if, uh, if we do something like this today, right, we close below some of these lows, I think there's a really good chance that we're gonna move lower. Will it happen? We'll see. But Apple's moving so low anyway that, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's gapping so small that I don't really have anything for it, uh, for me. Maybe later in the afternoon, we'll see. All right, next gap of the day, uh, mattress firm. Beautiful gap. So we're looking at the daily chart on mattress firm, and here's what we got. Here's the support is, is gapping around 52.24 right about now, which is in a gap. So that might prove to be a little bit of a support. Um, we'll see. But we got, I mean, it's clearing, bottom line is clearing every pivot pretty much for the last year. It's clearing every support for the last year. It's only down 13%, which is a little burnt, uh, which is a little, um, a little big for mattress firm. But uh, I, I'm expecting some bearishness on this trade. Volume is a little light on the daily. So I'm not gonna you know, lose my mind on this trade. I'm definitely gonna be patient. So I'm gonna write in, uh, volume is a tad light. Great location. I'll be patient and look to short on a retest of some kind. So the pre-market high is 55.38, pre-market low is 52.01. You had two really big bullish white candles. I'll go look at that for you in just a second. So let me hop in here to the uh, hourly chart. You can kind of see what I was looking at earlier this morning. The hourly from yesterday, some really, really big bullish volumes, some big candles coming in. So I think some people are gonna be trapped on mattress firm. And uh, here's kind of your after hours viewpoint. You can kind of see, I mean, this, the truth of the matter is, if it breaks this pre-market low, it's going to move down. I'm okay to play it bearish. I mean, the truth of the matter is, this is probably going to run. Meaning, if it breaks the pre-market low, that $52 price range is going to move lower. We're just going to play it on a retest. Because it is a slightly big gap. Volume is a little light. We're going to give it some time. But I love the location. If it runs without us, it runs without us. But I can be a little aggressive on the trade. We're just gonna play it on the retest. So Mattress Firm, without question, on my list. BRC, Brady Corp. I picked this one just cause, uh, you know, Tom Brady, he's the man. Also a little bit of a far gap down and volume is kind of light as well. Very similar to Mattress Firm as far as the volume. It's kind of close. So we got that volume. Pre-market volume is a little light. Um, I'm going to write down some lists for it. It's a bearish retest gap. So I'm going to come in here and say uh, 91115 BRC bearish retest gap low volume on the daily. Be patient and short the pullback. Alrighty, pretty much about it. Um, so it's still me on my list. What else you guys got out there? Uh, ARWR, I think Mr. Dan Walsh mentioned a little bit earlier. So ARWR, I really want it to open above 607. I want it to open above 607. Some people might say, why 607, Jeremy? That is the resistance line that I have drawn on Arrowhead Research. I had it drawn in there at some point, so it must be a good line. So right now it's at about 601 pre-market, so it's battling this resistance. Uh, earlier today, it was up around here, like 630. So I was thinking to myself, man, dude, that's a pretty decent gap. I mean, that's really clearing a pivot. Here's, and I went over to the long-term moving averages just, just to really see where they're at. 
Because oftentimes, if I'm like, I wonder where the averages are. Um, you know, usually if it's a really, really good gap, the averages won't be there, won't be near it. But uh, anyway, so I was thinking if it gapped up, it could trade up into those moving averages and roll over. That's still a possibility. It is a bullish retest gap, so I'm not going to play it personally. Very good chance I won't make it official. Um, I got it on my other list, though. AU. Show me where the gold's at. Ashanti. AU gapping down to 734. Let me see if my boy Jason McCoy's in the house. He's not. Man. Um, Sandra and Jeff Curtis are in here. All right. Let me uh, write into Jason. Nope. He's not in there either. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to say on AU, that's a really, really nice gap. It's at 734. So 734 is right about here. I think it's worth putting on a list to watch it. And what I would like to see is something like this. I'd like to see a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It is obviously a pennant pattern. It's obviously gapping out of the pennant pattern. It should continue lower. I'm going to put it on the list to watch a little bit later in the afternoon if we get really bored. Um, I hope Jason McCoy is still in his puts. You said he bought some puts, and I hope he's still in them. Because, again, that gap, I mean, here's the hourly chart on AU. Here's the hourly. And, uh, again, this gap was also, I believe, yep, this gap was also on this list right here. So, again, this list is good. Z-U-M-Z is another one. I'll come out and look at that in a second. So, anyway, uh, here's your pre-market data. Pre-market low is about 727. So, we start taking out 727. That should be really, really interesting. Uh, Patricia White's in the house. Good morning, Patricia. How are you? So looking at it without the extended hours, we got some nice little white candles. So I think, again, the gap down is a little bearish. And we'll come back over and look at it. Uh, if it starts taking out 720 and some change, I think it can make a trip down to 709 pretty quick. So if you're looking at a AU, I would be a little bit more bearish than bullish. It is on my other list. And we'll see what's up. Uh, we'll see what's up. Z-U-M-Z. 20% right now. It's a big, big mover. Looks like a bearish retest gap. It is. Um, it's down at $17.18. So a very, very large gap. This is going to be very similar to um, Marvel for me. Huge gap down. Higgins says could fade. I agree. If we are going to, well, I'll say if we do trade bullish, trade bearish, short the retest pullback if able. If it's hard to short, could be an even better fade. And by fade means I, that, that would be a bullish potential. Because just gapping down so far, right? I mean, looking at it, it was at $21. We're down here at $17. 20% down the bearish traders right think about the bearish traders they're gonna to say to themselves all right well this is looking pretty uh pretty good we're locking in some profit um look gonna go look to buy this thing um and if they buy to cover that could cause some buying pressure and it's gapping slightly close to a little bit of a support so we'll see what that one does I'm gonna write that down my list and then I'm gonna hop over to my uh, to the gap of the day that I'm looking at is going to be NEE. -E. Now I'm gonna tell you guys exactly what I want to see on this trade. Right now it's at 93.79, so it's um, 93.79, 93.79. So it's still a really good gap. Yeah, as long as it opens below 94. So here's exactly what I want to see. Or I'm gonna watch the one minute charts on this one. And I want some very small candles, some small dojis, if I can get it. So I mean, if I can get like a doji shooting star, right now this candle's not that small. Um, I'm gonna see how it plays in. It's not too huge though. It, uh, we're dealing with about 20 cent spread right now. So this is the bid ask spread. Um, if we do gap and we trade up a little bit, I'll see if it can roll over. I'm just going to keep an eye on this one. 
Um, let me come in here to the daily chart just to see where we got. All right, so that's a great location. Again, 94.30 is a good resistance. So as long as you don't break that, as long as you don't trade above that, I'm still going to keep an eye on it. Um, one could say, oh, Jeremy, why don't you just short it now and place your stop above 94.30? Could consider it. Uh, again, the bid-ask spread is really, really wide right now. The range of today's is not bad, though. The open is 93.79, and then the high is um, 94.16. So we're dealing with about 30 cents on a $90 stock. It's really not that bad. Again, Nextera Energy is a $90 stock, so overall this candle is not too big so again it's actually a decently sized bullish candle still hasn't broken 94.30 this is still the first minute of the trading day um, I'm gonna be a little patient with it but I am debating pretty seriously uh, this range right here so trigger 93.72 Let me, let me just look at this and see if we can get a better risk reward ratio. Stop above the pre-market high of 94.33. So what is that? 60 cents. Um, minus 93.72. 60 cents. Six, uh, 61 cents divided by 93. Um, I mean, the percentage is there. You know, it's not, a, it's not a big percentage of the stock. So the risk reward is actually still okay. What I'm going to look for, I guess, at this point is just kind of wait and see uh, if we can get some reversal candles. Let's go ahead and pull up the EMAs on the one minute chart. I'm gonna to have to get a candle to close as a bearish candle. And again, if we do pop bullish, which it looks like we just did. All right, so we're popping bullish. All right, so I'm liking it a little less now since it broke those highs. Uh, I'm still gonna watch it. What I'm gonna watch for is some type of rollover on probably uh, one of the longer term charts. But at this moment, you know, it would look something like this, uh, which is again, it's still a little bit of a Still about 60 cents. That'd be 93.98 by 94.51. I'm just gonna leave it alone for just a moment though. In order for me to confirm this again, so since it broke that high, the high that I didn't want it to break, so right now it's not doing exactly what I wanted it to do. So remember, perfect gap and goes like this. You want them to do exactly what you tell them to because the it's gonna be very, very spready and volatile in the morning. And we're getting some pretty good bullish volume too. So again, if it doesn't trigger, doesn't trigger. I'm going to need to see some solid breakdowns on this trade though before I take it. I'm gonna need to see something like this and like this. So probably 93, 98 might need to get taken out for me. I'm gonna keep watching just a little bit. All right, so Alibaba, here's the one minute chart. So getting pretty volatile on the one minute. Uh, I don't really need to look at Alibaba on the one minute. Here's the five. We got a big, nice, long lower shadow, uh, upper shadow, I'm sorry. So we gapped down. We didn't quite open where I wanted it to, so we opened at 63.37, which was not below the low of yesterday. You can see the low of yesterday was right there. We opened pretty much right on it. So I can still keep Alibaba on the list. I don't love it as much. I'm gonna need it to break the support and something like this, and then maybe we'll, we'll try it out at that point. Mattress Firm um, is running. All right, that makes sense. So this is the five minute chart on Mattress Firm. I was looking at that pre-market. I was like, man, this looks like it's just gonna run. Um, again, it's a very, very far gap. Moving averages are forever away. Some traders would have taken this by this. I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna wait a little bit on it because like I mentioned, it's in a gap. It's a 15% gap down. Moving averages are pretty far away. It's not technically a perfect gap and go. Yes, there's some people trapped, but not horrendously. Um, it broke the pre-market low, so I, I definitely think there's some edge here. I just got away a little bit on this one because again, it's if you're doing a perfect gap and go, you don't want the stock to be that far away because by the time you get in and you set your stop here, then it has to move you know down like that, which is like 20 cent, 20 percent down to get 2R, and then you know it's going to have like a knee-jerk reaction. Plus, right now the spread's a little wild. 
the bid ask spread. All right, let me just go see how uh, BRC opens. This is Brady Corp. This is the one that's down. I kind of liked it a little bit. Here's your daily chart. And um, yeah, so again, so low volume on the daily, be patient and short the pullback. All right, so I'm gonna be patient and short the pullback. Again, lower volume. I'll wait on that one for just a little bit. Plains All-American. So Brad says, Plains All-American for day trade or swing trade? Um, day trade. Swing trade are pulling into a little bit of a support right now, but it is a good gap. I have a daily support at 32.66. Doesn't mean that my support's right or wrong, um, but it is it is a good gap. I agree with that totally. You got some nice white candles. Let me just kind of zoom in here for a little bit, and you can just kind of see what I'm looking at, folks, uh, for for this gap. Two little white candles, boop 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 boop. Right opens right below both of those. Here's the five minute chart. Five minute chart, uh, again, you got a nice black candle, good gap. So I think it's worth uh, worthy of leaving on the list and I'd probably look to uh, day trade that if we're gonna trade it. Speaking of, we have Chevron over here, ticker symbol CVX. Uh, we're in that bearish swing trade. Not much is going on right now. Just kind of hanging out. ETP, Energy Transfer Partners. Uh, making a little bit of a lower low and lower high. There is some edge on this one because we're in bearish on it, so we might be able to get a chance to play this uh, potentially today. I mean, it's it's moving bearish and moving in, a, in the direction that we want it to. So I might put ETP on the list because there's not too much stopping that trade. Um, all right, cool. So let me go hop back over to this guy, and so we got some uh, we got some good bullishness coming in. So we're gonna have to break a support, a pretty decent support with some with some good candles. Something like this is definitely a possibility. But at this point, folks, on NEE, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you for the rest of the day, I'm gonna be trading the five minute candles because again, it did not do exactly what I wanted it to do. So on a really, really good gap, the gap is phenomenal. Uh, I'm fine with that, but it it's, didn't do exactly what I wanted it to do. That's my plan. So I'm gonna wait for some really good uh, reversals or some candles. So I gotta get this candle to close. Okay, then another black ca uh, candle might form. Let's say it's a black candle. Let's say it's a one black crow. Does something like that. Okay, I'll wait for that candle to close. I'm gonna wait at least for two five minute candles to close because we're getting a lot of bullish volume on a phenomenal bearish gap. It should be moving bearish. So we gotta wait for some edge on this one. So, Gonna wait for at least two five minute candles. What well, would be great is so we get an upper shadow here, um, and then a evening star reversal pattern, and then I'll take the break of that low and place the stop, and then we'll kind of just watch it from there. All right, Alibaba not doing much. Uh, Mattress Firm is getting that retest that we talked about. BRC, same thing. Plains All American hanging out, and e Energy Transfer Partners chilling, chilling like a villain. SAVE Spirit Airlines had a slight bullish gap up today. Very, very small, so it's just kind of hanging out. Not much is going on. Uh, let's just go peruse the markets for a moment. SPY, like I mentioned, small black candle. I don't think it's going to do much. And then maybe, maybe, maybe a slight afternoon sell-off. Apple, smaller white candle. Again, it gapped down, but I think Apple is going to go bullish um, a little bit. You know, something like this. Again, it needs, if it's going to go bearish, it needs to go bearish, I think, today in order for that bearish swing trade to work that uh, some of us have on Apple. Ford, a little bit of a white candle today. Twitter, nothing. GoPro, um, nothing really is down just a little bit again today. Facebook, small white candle. Facebook's kind of range bound. Um, Pretty big bullish candle yesterday. I actually might put Facebook on my list as a continuation. There's not much stopping it uh, on the daily. If you look at the daily, let's just look at the moving averages for a second and notice where we are. We got all kinds of resistance right there. What day is that? Uh, Wednesday, we have a high of 91.98. Yesterday, we had a not high of 92.06, and today we have a high of 91.98. So we start breaking some of those highs, maybe retest some of those highs, something like this, maybe like 92.15, that could be a possibility. 
So here's the five minute chart. Um, I think Facebook is worth watching. Something like this, you know, if it trades sideways, a little bit of a pop, pull back and a retest. It might happen later in the afternoon, but we can start planning it now, All right? That's the point. In day trading, one of the best advices I can give you guys, me, my, I can give myself, is you know, don't trade the present. Right? If you're looking at it right now and you're like, ah, oh, you try to catch what it's doing now, you're gonna get emotional. Instead of worrying about what it's doing now, create a plan for the future because you know that you cannot control stocks. All you know is you can control yourself. And if you can control yourself, you can be consistent. That's what we're gonna go for. We gotta go for consistency. So NE is doing what we wanted it to do, at least at this particular point in time. So I gotta get this, this candle has to close. So I gotta get four minutes. If we get a, you know, if a big, big black candle comes in, what do you guys think? Are we gonna chase that, yes or no? Mm -mm. Nope, not gonna chase it. But ginormous bearish candle just comes in, I'm like, man, all right, well, that's awesome, recognizing the opportunity. So what I would do then at that point is again, wait for the retest of that and then still probably consider going bearish. So I will say we can start considering this one. I mean, if we get that evening star, you more or less got to take that trade. Um, it depends on what this low is going to be. Right now the low is 94.40. If this candle can close like this in three minutes, then it's going to be 94.38 by 94.83. If it doesn't, we'll wait for a pullback. I'm gonna just sit here and judge this, the size of this candle. Right now, it's, it shouldn't move much more, and if it does, I'm gonna like it a little bit less. What I would prefer on this candle is to have a lower wick of some kind, even if it's a very, very small one. But I do not want this candle to be too big. This is about, what was the trade I was looking at earlier, 60 cents? This is 60 cents, that's about as big as I'm willing to go. I would really, really like it if we get a, um, a little bit of a lower shadow on this candle. All right, um, we'll come back to that in two or three minutes. All right, so Baba, cool. So it broke the low. There's the low that I was looking at that it broke right here, that low of the day from yesterday. So it broke the low and it broke the five minute low of the day, great. So. The low of this candle is 93.16. I said earlier that I want a retest of 93.16. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some of this action, some of this action, and we'll continue to keep an eye on Alibaba. Mattress firm. Good thing we waited, right? So just kind of consolidating and hanging out a little bit. So we're gonna give mattress firm some time. It's a big gap. When stocks gap really, really large, the longer the gap, the longer you should wait on the trade. The smaller the gap, you know, if it's a good gap and a good location, the more aggressive you can take it. Yoav in the house, what's up, dude? He's like, can you look at Marvel? Same thing with everything else, uh, just huge, huge gap down. I mean, we're talking 17%, so I'm without question gonna wait on Marvel. Uh, here's the daily chart. Let me scroll up and throw you my notes, Yoav, on Marvel. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Here's the notes in the chat pane. There we go, brother. That's what I got. So I agree with you. It's a bearish gap. It's a very, very strong bearish gap. We're already at 11 million shares traded on Marvel Technology. So realistically, we just gotta um, see what happens. All right, let me hop back over to NE really quick. And just look at this trade once again for just a second on the daily. Yeah, it's a gap that I'm willing to risk an R on. Okay. So this is kind of a textbook evening star reversal pattern and we're looking at the 10 exponential moving average um, would act as a little bit of resistance in really about three to four minutes. So we got a little bit of a lower shadow. Um, 9428 by 9483 on NEE. There we go. So I would say that's it did what we want to do. 
That's as, about as big as I can take that risk is about uh, 60 cents on the stock, which isn't too big. By the low of the day is almost a one to one and we, we haven't had that many candles. Again, the stop would be considered at the high of the day. Uh, the stop is also at the 10 EMA on the five minute chart, which we failed yesterday kind of nicely. So this simply just ties into everything that we want and the fact that we got that little lower shadow on the five minute candle is really kind of what I like to see. The longer we trade sideways, the more I like this trade. Um, 9483, this is a perfect gap and go. Gap and go potential day trade. And again, I mean, a little bit of a white candle here is phenomenal. It's exactly what I expected, well, not expected, but exactly what I wanted. All right. Rock on. Okay, um, cool. So Bob was on the list, Mattress Firm, BRC, Plans American, ETP, Facebook. I'm looking at ETP. I mean, something's gonna move. We're gonna, again, we're not gonna you know, uh, lose all of our three R's before noon. That's not gonna happen today. So we're gonna be calm, cool, collected, and just look for some trades out there, especially if I'm making trades official. Kroger, um, oh man, Higgins, you're right. Good trade, dude. It's a gorgeous fade. Yeah, it was. Just a good bullish retest gap. Now, I will say, if, you, if you're a big fan of the retest, I mean, Brad plays them better than I do. I had to be very clear about that. Just make sure he knows. He just plays them better than I do. Uh, it's pulling back to the 50 exponential moving average on the daily chart and near the 100 simple moving average. I'm not going to personally play Kroger today. It did fade nicely. If I were playing Kroger, I would wait for this candle to close. And I would do uh, above that, below that. If I was playing Kroger, so this would be a uh, bullish entry and a stop right there. But not going to play it today. Uh, Lisa. So Lisa, I got NEE -E on the board. This is, again, official day trade. So Lisa, this would be, uh, this trigger is going to be a stop limit. Stop limit. So the stop is 94.28, right? That's the triggering price that triggers the order to go in. And then the limit price would also be $94.28. That's the price that simply says, all right, this is how much I want to sell the order for. So you can literally just have this. I mean, that's that's the order. So you, you know, a lot of people get confused by the word trigger because they don't see that on their broker, which I think is a very good thing to be confused about. I mean, that's, you know, trigger... I might one day consider switching that terminology, but anyway, that would be a stop limit, 94.28, 94.28. So it's two different orders. This is order one, this is order two, and you hit the sell button. Um, all right, let me get my drawing tool. My drawing tool crashes every now and then. All right, back over to Alibaba. I am gonna continue to keep an eye on Alibaba. It's moving down nicely today, and here's what I want to do. We already got one official trade out there, so I'm not gonna be too overzealous about this trade, uh, but this is going to be a limit sell. So this would be a trade that we want to get as it pulls back at 63, sure, 63.17. So a limit sell, so you're telling the market, okay, market, I want to sell at this price or higher. LNG is a continuation. Yeah, man, it just keeps on rolling over. Beautiful trade. All right, so we're gonna keep an eyes, our, our eyes on the prize on BABA. That was a gap that I wanted from, really from yesterday. Um, give me one second, let me just get my pin tool working. We got an order open. Let me see where that pin tool went. Uh, 
Great volume on Alibaba too, just really solid rollover. Omnidazzle, where are you? Where'd you go, dude? Got so many screens up sometimes. Uh, I think I can close that one. I'll leave that one open. Hmm, can't find it. Strange. I guess it's still trying to. All right, give me one second. Um, just trying to come up in here and get this application to work. So anyway, Alibaba, I'm looking for that limit sell on the pullback. Let me close that down. There we go. Okay. And the trade would be uh, this right there. So again, limit sell, uh, 63.17, stop at 63.45. Here's the five minute chart. I'm looking at this on a few other time frames before I make it official. I really, really do like it a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, it looks great on the five. Here's the 15 minute chart. Looks splendid on the 15 minute chart. I'm gonna make that official and I'm okay with leaving that open for a while. If Alibaba continues lower, awesome. Baba 63.17 limit sell by 63.45. So again, the limit sell is uh, simply standing in the market. All right, well, if, if Baba pulls back to this price, I want to sell it as high as possible. That's what you're attempting to do. There we go. Um. Looking to play this bearish on the pullback. Already in the swing trade. So again, I'm gonna leave that open for a little bit and we might cancel it and come back to it and try to re retame the beast. But I'm gonna leave that open probably, honestly, for like an hour or two. Because that, that's just really the level that I want it to do. And if it doesn't, you know, we're in the trade uh, on bearishly on the swing. So we're not just entirely missing the trade, I don't I don't think. So there's no reason. I mean, it's very, very early in the morning. So we could get a crazy wick up there. It could fill. You know, the more the moving averages come down, the better. I'm game. All right. Yo, uh, so do look at, did we look at NCR? I don't think we did, dude. Let me go check an NCR. NCR, looks like it's gapping up to resistance. Bullish retest gap up. Um, above the 50 exponential moving average. Here's the long-term moving averages. I don't think they're gonna have anything to do with this one today. No, not really. Come back to the five minute. And here's your exponential moving averages. Yoav, you also play bullish day trades much better than I do. A lot of you guys do. I'm about to say, I think it's gonna pull back a little bit farther. Yeah, I'll leave that one alone for a moment. I didn't mean to go back that quickly though. Um, Omnidazzle, let me see if I can pull it up. Lisa, what's your question? Um, so NCR, I'm just not playing any bullish retest gaps lately. I don't know why, and especially since I'm a little bearish on the market, just slightly. Okay, wow, that's running really slow. I don't know what just happened. My computer just went, <laughs> Okay, bullish retest gap near the 50 EMA on the daily chart. I won't personally play this or make it official, but if NCR closes above the 27, 24 daily resistance and bounces off the 50 EMA, I'll be more bullish than bearish. Boom, there you go, Yoav. By the way, man, it's a pleasure meeting you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're jealous, you should be. I met Yoav in person, in the flesh.
I shook his hand even. True story. Brad, I know you're jealous. <laughs> and you should be. Rightfully so. <laughs> I said, come on, you know, you know you weren't going anywhere without a hug, man. All right, let me hop back over to uh, this NEE chart. I'm still liking this. I'm just going to let it hang out, let it do its thing. Uh, I, I'm going to keep the stop where it is. I'm going to say if we can continue to battle this level up here for a while, I can maybe tighten the stop up. But I like the stop where it is. I don't think I'm going to move it for the moment. Alibaba, again, there's maybe a potential pullback, so we'll see. I'm going to leave it open. I, mean, I, just, I just like that trade. I have no tr no problem losing an R on that one. It did, it did It's doing exactly what I wanted to do. Mattress Firm, on the other hand, is kind of moving a little bit without us. It's down 17% right now. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just going to have to wait for the pullback on this and try to short the pullback. I might have to do like a limit sell or something to try to capture that pullback. We'll see. Brady Corporation rolled over nicely. So some volume really, really came in. It's a little sparse. Again, the volume is a little light, not terrible. Oh God, it's terrible. We're at the low of the day. I mean, that would have been a little, I wouldn't say too hard to trade, but I don't think you would have gotten filled unless you did a market order, something like that. I'm still gonna be patient on it again. And by sparse, I just mean that you can see the volume's a little light. You can see a little bit of a, like a two, three cent gap right there. Like a one, two cent gap right there on the five minute chart. That's what I mean by sparse. Plains All-American continuing down a little bit lower. ETP continuing down a little bit lower. So I'm looking for some trading opportunities on ETP specifically. Um, Facebook is still just hanging out. And Yoav says tweezer bottom on Arrowhead Research. Arrowhead Research. Here's the five minute chart. And here's the daily. I'm actually looking to, believe it or not, man, I'm looking to fade Arrowhead. I don't know why, but it, it failed off the 100 very, very nicely. So yeah, you could definitely play it bullish. I don't disagree with you on that. I mean, it did move nicely and it has bounced semi-well. Here's the daily exponential moving averages on Arrowhead Research. So we're above the 50 and we're below the 100. So here's the uh, five minute chart. If it can close like this with a good hammer candle, great, but that was a, I'm sure one of you sold that right there off that 100. I don't know who it was, but it was one of you. <laughs> Higgins says, this, this Brady Corp is looking deflated. Yeah, he was on the spot last night though, man. That was a performance. I was about to say he's Johnny on the spot, but he's not that bad. <laughs> I think Johnny on the spot is in, and any kind of football term is now like a uh, a diss. I don't think it's a compliment. <laughs> Hugan said, if only I had him on my team and started him. I do have him on my team and did not start him. That's why he's, he's, he's making a joke to me, in case you guys didn't know. I'm going to go down in history as the guy who didn't start Brady uh, in the first game of the season. Unless Cam Newton goes hammer. If it gets into the 20s, I'll be happy. I was thinking Brady would get 17 and Newton would get 22. Um, so if Cam runs in two scores and throws two scores, I'll be pretty happy about that. Eh, we'll see. He's going against the Jaguars. But no, I, I know, Linderman. I know. <laughs> I know. He's my favorite player, too, which is total bandwagon. Guys, I know. I'm sorry. It is. It's a total bandwagon move to love Brady, but I like Brady for a long time. Oh, man. It looks like we're going to have to keep waiting on Alibaba. Jeez. Jeez, oh, jeez. I'll keep waiting for it, though. We got something out there, which is looking uh, delicious. The spread has calmed down significantly. It's only five cents now. Mattress firm, yep, just doing its thing without us. There's Brady's Brady Corp. 
This gonna be a running joke all day. I, I'm I'm almost positive of it. You guys are gonna make fun of me all day for that one, which is fine. Patricia says, don't talk about the Jags. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. Patricia, one of the biggest NFL blunders. They still have a chance. But this, to me, is just football merchandise 101. How do they not hire Tebow? Blows my mind. Just doesn't make sense to me. Jacksonville needed a quarterback. Even if they didn't win a game, they would sell out every game for three, four years. That's the thing. They would have sold tickets. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. In football, it's a matter about money. I mean, if you're the biggest franchise and you're making the most money and you never win a game, that's fine. You become the Yankees and you store your cash for 20 years and then you turn your team around. I don't know. How could it? How in the world? All right, uh, here's AutoZone. AutoZone. So Tommy says uh, shorting AutoZone with November puts. Oh, it's a swing. All right, Tom. I got you, big man. AutoZone is in my list of Nemesis stocks. I don't know if you guys got a chance to read that uh, article or not, but uh, keep in mind, I believe AutoZone has earnings in a week or two, Tommy. Probably, I'm, I'm sure you knew that, but you're like you're probably looking to sell some of the volatility potentially. Okay, Tommy M in November puts. All right. And we'll check out that one uh, for you next Thursday, big man. If you're in it that long, Transportation Thursday. I can see why you would be, though. Some lower highs right there. It doesn't look that bad. Speaking of transportation, let me go look at Alaska Airlines really quick. Um, I don't think it's going to close below this price, but this $80.40 $80 is a bearish trigger. Probably won't. That definitely doesn't have to, but... If it does, we'll see what's going on. So here's our list of gap downs, and here's our list of gap ups. Let's go look at AU. AU, beautiful gap down. All right, so it, it definitely continued. So kind of like I was talking about earlier this morning, gap looks strong, had a good bearish move. Uh, I was focused on a few other things. But let's see if we can pull back. I'll officially put that on the list and see if we can watch it for some type of pullback or retest. Um, this trade right here would have not been bad. Just taking that low of the white candle would have been good for an R and a half, two R's. Which I'm sure you played, Bill. That's just how you play. That's just how you roll. All right, perfect. That's an hour um, of analysis right there, folks. I love it. Good stuff.